Welcome to our Elemental Loop tutorial series where everything you need to know about the Elemental Loop is explained. This is the part 3 of our series. And if you've not seen the part 1 and part 2 of this series, not to worry, a link to the playlist where all the series are contained will be added in the description of this video. So without further delay, let's dive in and get started. So in this part of our series, we'll be talking about the archive, then the post and product taxonomy loop. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to come over here under the template and then we're going to go to head to our team builder. I'm going to open this in another tab. So let's allow it to load. Okay. Under this uh, team builder, I'm just going to come over here and we're going to talk about uh, the product uh, archive. So we're just going to click this plus icon here and let's create a product archive. Mind you, whatever we do in the product archive, you can also be applicable to that of the post archive. Okay, so I won't be making use of this. So we're just going to close it here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to come over here and let's add a structure and let's select this. Okay, now we can come over here and um, set it to full width. And let's come here and give it a pattern of 100 all around so we can see precisely what we're doing. So I'm just going to click on this Ruby's cube icon here. And then I'm not going to make use of this archive product. Neither am I going to make use of this what we are seeing here so what i'm going to do is we're going to make use of the product loop we've created already that is what we're going to make use of so in order for us to make use of that we're just going to come here and search for loop grid and then we're going to drag this loop and drop it here okay so now under the layout we have to choose the template type we're going to come here and we're going to select the product here and then for the template we're going to choose a template now we won't be creating the template for scratch because we've already created our product loop template so we're just going to search for that uh template and remember what we called our product loop uh we'll, we'll title it new new loop yeah new loop new product loop and also we'll title this so we're just going to select it yep this is precisely what we created in uh part two of our series okay so now that we've selected this as our um loop for our product archive so that we make our WooCommerce website or e-commerce website looks uniform. That's one of the advantages of making use of the elemental loop in designing your either your your um e-commerce website or a blog website. Okay. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we can come over here, set the columns, the products we want in each column, and then the items per page. And you can also toggle on the uh, equal height. Okay. So um the next one here we're gonna come over to the query. Now for the query source. We 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 should we are going to select the current query and not the latest product or any other option here, but the current query because this we are dealing with the archive. Okay, so um, you can also come over here and exclude, or but I wouldn't advise you do any other thing here since we are dealing with the archive. And then for the pagination, you can come over and select whatever format you want. It could be number, uh, previous and next. It could be load or click. It depends. So our infinite scroll, it depends. So I'm just going to select the load on click. Okay. And then uh, leave it at load more. So the next thing here is uh, the additional option, which is also a great option. The nothing found message whereby in a situation whereby uh, a category is, is selected and then there is no content in that category. This is what your users are going to see. Okay. Let's just align it to the center. And um, but that's pretty much it. No much uh, design needs to be done here. So now that we've done everything and Gotten all the setup. The next thing we're going to do is um, we're just going to click on the publish and then we're going to add condition. Now, for the condition here, we're going to add it to all product archive. Okay. And then we're going to click on save. There are other conditions here, but we're just going to leave it at this all product archives. And then we're going to click on save and then allow for it to load. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to head over to our dashboard so we can test run what we've done. Okay. So now on our dashboard, we're going to come over to the product. Now under the product, let's go to the category, the product category. And then let's um, search for, um, let's see, clothing. Let's view products under clothing. And you can see, this is it. This is the design for product Panda. And then let's view product hover product. It's going to take the same design. You can see the same. All right. Before we head over to creating our product 
taxonomy loop or post taxonomy loop. There is a quick one I want I'd like us to add, and that is the archive title. Now, what this does is it shows you, uh, or rather, it shows your visitors the category or the tag they are viewing at that point in time. So we're just going to drag and drop this archive title right here. And then we're just going to go to the style option and let's change the color to black. We could leave it at this size because we're not, but it depends on what you're building. You could change it. Now, in a situation where you do not want this archive to show before the title of the category or your visitors are viewing, you're just going to come over to the content and then you click on this um, branch icon here. And then where you see this include context, you're just going to click on no and it's going to take that out. And so if they are viewing um, music uh, category or album category just going to show the album category and then you could also come over here and put the text uh you want your preferred text before the the name of the category so i could just, just come over here and say you are viewing shop category yeah and then this is what we're going to get if you are, yeah, you are viewing shop and this category has an added shop category. Let's give space. Okay. Oh, it didn't come over. Oh, I, I made a mistake. I went and decided in the fallback test instead of the after. Okay. I wonder it didn't come up. Now you can see you are viewing shop category. Okay. But this is quite lengthy. Well, uh, it depends on your level of creativity of what you want this is just for the purpose of this tutorial so you can just leave it the way it is and remove the before and after text or whatever works for you okay all right so now that we've done that we're just going to click on update and we're going to head over to creating our product taxonomy loop we're just going to head over to our dashboard now under our dashboard we'll go down to where we see product and then we'll go to the crack category there's something I want us to understand here before we go further to creating our product taxon taxonomy loop. Before we start creating our product taxonomy loop. Now you can see that these are the various categories we have here and these are the counts of um, products that are under each category. And we can also see that under clothing categories there, there are two subcategories which is the hoodie and the shirt and under the music as well we have the album and the single. So we're just going to create a sample um, category. So I'm going to call this category sample. The next thing we're going to add a thumbnail, so let's upload one. And let's select this image here. Okay, now let's click on add new. Okay, so this is our most recent um, category. And as you can see, the count is zero. So no product is under this category here. Okay, so now that we have uh, we are done with our product categories and we know how to add a new product category, and the images and all that let's head over and let's create our product taxonomy loop okay so we're going to head over to our canvas area now what we're going to do here we're just going to search for loop and we're going to drag and drop this loop grid here okay so for the under the layout the template type we're going to choose is going to be the product taxonomy mind you the reason we're focusing solely on the product taxonomy is that i wouldn't want this video to, to be long okay and also Whatever we are able to achieve on the product taxonomy loop, when you apply the knowledge from there, you can also do the same and create a post taxonomy loop. Okay. All right. So the next thing here is to choose a template. So in a situation whereby we've created a template for our um, product taxonomy loop, we can just choose the template here and search the name of the template and then make use of it. However, we're going to create a template from scratch. Okay. So now we either click on the create template here or create a template here, whatever one all works pretty well. So I'm just going to click on this and then click on save, then allow for it to load. All right. So now here we, we're going to add uh, a Flexbox container. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're just going to come over here and let's drag and drop an image widget. Okay, for this image widget here, we're going to go to the style option and let's change the width to pixel and then give it a pixel of, let's say, 200 and then a height of 200. So we'll have something like this. Okay, and then object fit to set it to cover. 
okay so now let's go back to the content area now when you hover on this image you see the option for dynamic tag so that is what we're going to make use of so just click on the dynamic tag now most of you might think well featured image is the dynamic tag we're going to select no when you're creating a product taxonomy featured image is not what you'll use you're just going to come over under the work commands where we see the category image that is what we're going to select okay so we're just going to select the category image and then um okay it's going to pull category image for you uh okay so this is what we have here all right so the next thing we're going to do we're going to add a link also for this category image here so that it's also clickable so to do so we're just going to click on this and then we're going to select custom url and under the custom url we're going to uh, select the dynamic tag now in normal situation you're supposed to choose the post url however this is a uh, product taxonomy loop we are creating so post url will work well here so the url we're going to choose here is going to be the archive url okay so we're going to select the archive url and then the next thing we're going to do we'll come over here and we're going to drag and drop a title right here right below okay now for our title widget we're going to align it to the center and then come back here and we're going to select this um the dynamic tag and then we're going to come over to where we see the archive title that is what we're going to make use of okay we'll select that okay now you can see that the archive title it comes with this category showing telling you that okay category hover product that is the category that has been selected here all right so what we're going to do now is uh we're just going to come over here and click on this range icon here now you see this text written include context now what this means is that it shows it is what adds this category here if it's tag this is going to be tag and so on too if you come over here and toggle this to no it's going to remove that category and then all you're going to have there is just the title of your category okay and then come over to the advanced you can come here and set the before text and an after text and also a forward text so that you can use for your category so we won't be doing that because we don't need that okay so we'll come over to the style option and then for the color we're going to change the color to black and then we're going to come over here for the typography we're going to come over here and let's reduce the font size to to 20. okay and then let's increase the weight let's set the weight to 600 so somewhat like this okay so now that we are done here we're going to come over back, come back here and let's make this link also this um, title also clickable okay so we just do the same select the archive url as well so we are basically done with our category we're basically done with our category and then what we're going to do next is we're just going to come over here and let's update this okay so if you want to style this you can style this and then you know add whatever you want structure it you know just be creative with it so the basic thing here is just to get the knowledge of how to go about creating your custom product taxonomy loop okay so the next thing we're going to do is just going to click on save and back all right so as we can see now we now have the various loops uh the various categories we have for our product here okay so now let's come over here let's click on this and let's edit this template this um loop grid now we'll come over here under the column we can increase the the number of columns we have we can set it to five okay and then the items per page we can just let's set it to ten so that we have a lot of items if we have a lot of categories we can see all the categories here now we can see that there are 10 categories here and then when we we'll come over here to the query now under the query for the source it is the product category as usual and then we'll come over to which is the right source okay and then we'll come over to our filter you can see here this is the filter that shows all the product all the uh, categories that are available and then we can also do the manual selection so let's just leave that and we can order this by name or, and either by descending order or ascending order or by id okay and then you can come here under this hide empty what this means is that it's going to hide the empty category now remember that the category well we're creating the product category the, the most recent category we created was the sample category which is an empty category so and we have it here so when i toggle this to yes to hide empty category this is what's going to happen the sample category is going to disappear as you can see it has disappeared because it doesn't have any content in it okay so now we'll come over to the next op option here which is the filter by depth now when you toggle this on what this does for you is that it allows you to show either um categories that have um children that have subcategories within them 
or and also gives you the ability to regulate the number of subcategories you can show as you can see for now what we we'll have here is the entire categories we can go over to our, go back to our categories and we can see that under clothing we have hoodies and t-shirt now we'll come back here we can see also that we have clothing here and there is hoodies here and there is t-shirt here now when you go back you, under the music you have the albums and the single and under here we can see the music there is the album and also there is the singles here okay so now this depth option there are a series of options here where you can set one two three and i'm going to explain to you how this works now we by default it is set to all which shows all the categories that you have and then when you set it to one what one does for you is it shows you only the parent category no subcategory okay so now when we come back here you can see that this hover is a, a, a single category a parent category and doesn't have any subcategory clothing is also the parent category to um hoodie and t-shirt so hoodie and t-shirt has been taken out and then albums and singles have also been taken out so what we'll now have here is the music poster and the watches and when you come over here you can see that watches poster music over product and clothing no subcategory so now when you come over to select two now what two does for you it now gives you uh it now shows two subcategories from the parent category okay so now we now see that we still have the clothing here and under the clothing we have the t-shirt and the hoodie and then we can see also here the music under which we have the singles and the album so you can increase this as as you want and set it as you want but uh i'm just going to set ours to one which shows us just the 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 parent categories here okay so now that we've done that the next option here is the additional option now under this additional option what this does is it it shows you it allows users to whenever they click on a category of your website and there is nothing to show display for them they get this message here which is uh nothing to display since what you find what we can't find what you're looking for this is a new feature and it's a wonderful feature that that, that you can make use of okay you can just align it to the center and under the style option there isn't there isn't much for us to style we can only add gaps between the column and between the rows and also the uh, nothing found message you can set the space from top and bottom and then the typography okay so now that we've done this uh we can just come over here and click on update and then we can click on the preview changes so we now have these are uh, the various categories we have on our website which are all clickable so if you come over here and you click on poster it's going to take you to the archive for posters and show you all the products that are under posters as you can see here you are viewing poster category just like what we set when we're creating the archive uh product archive okay so now when you go back you click on hover product it's now going to take you here where you can see all the hover product here and and so on so that's pretty much it about how to go about creating your product taxonomy loop and also the archive product archive loop now both methods we apply in creating both steps we apply in creating the product taxonomy loop and also the product archive can also be applied in creating the that for the post as well and so we've come to the end of this um, part of our series if you haven't been following our series there is a link in the description of this video where you can see a playlist that contains all the parts of this series and also remember to give this video a thumbs up and if you've not subscribed you're new to our channel you're not yet subscribed remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified when next i drop a new video granted then see you on our next video bye bye